Deus Volt, my fellow gamers. Here we are, we're gonna do a little like unboxing type video. I actually scored myself a Dreadball Crastivore. Uh, these guys, you kind of want them for your Maison Labs forces. Uh, they kind of specialists and they're just, well, number one, they're really cool models. And number two, their rules are really cool too. Uh, you know, and you want the supplemental stuff. I say supplemental is part of the force. Uh, it, but like when you buy the Star Saga, the main box set, you'll get basically everything that you need for Maison Labs Army. You don't get this guy. You don't get what is it? Um, the the Doctor Gale. The plague victim doctor, and you also don't get subject 901, uh, and then you don't get your crastivores. And in the new uh, third edition, they also have cyborgs, and we haven't seen those models yet. I'm kind of excited for those. Um, it may on labs, I mean, you get plague victims, you got all kinds of neat stuff in. In the force, it has a feel of a little bit of GCPS with the. The Black Reach Marines and all that stuff. I think it's called Black Reach, but you get this guy too, and he's just cool. It's weird that he comes from Dreadball. I guess they were trying to cross reference stuff. It just makes collecting a pain in the butt. Uh, this guy at the bottom, you can you can see some fingerprints, some dust accumulation, and look at that that butte right on top uh, the dust from years of being on a shelf because nobody plays dread ball yeah I don't know I've never you know I, I did blood bowl for a little bit I don't know who didn't do blood bowl uh, but <clears throat> yeah uh, I don't know about dread ball uh, maybe it's cool maybe not uh, I will have to find somebody that has a team that I could play because yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, maybe because I really like Nameless, I might do the Calamarian Ancients, but you know, I'd have to find a team of those in there. They're pretty hard to find because they're actually an all metal uh, team. I do have the John Doe character because I wanted to use him in Dead Zone. So Crastivore, that's the old one job. And they got a little blurb about it being a terrifying spider guy, but there's a romantic point, you know I'm keeping that. And then this is fairly simple. For an unboxing. You get an acrylic base, which is pretty cool, but they're not needed here. Then you've got the giant single piece model. The Crastivore, look at this. The mug on that guy. Here they've got this peg just used for extra support. I'm going to cut that clean off and then I'm going to fill this gap with green stuff and or the, the foam that I have, the liquid foam. That stuff is awesome. Or foam putty from Woodland Scenics. Uh, this guy's got some pretty wicked mold lines right there on his abdomen. It must have been a weird mold. And up here, he's got these two, like, cannon-looking things, like guns. Uh, and they aren't done up as nicely as they are here. So what I'm going to have to do is um, drill those out. But yeah, take the peg out, drill out these little cannon things, deal with the mold lines. That's going to run up... Um, up and down each leg uh, and on the other side of this too not too difficult but just time consuming especially since it's it's a plasticky type guy but um, that's how you have to find these models it, it goes hand in hand with the the video that i uploaded uh, last is the disparities of collecting for dead zone uh, I mean, this is for a different game. Cross-game reference, Dreadball. 
you know. So the Crastivore for Maison Labs, you've got the Spawn for the Nameless, and you have, oh, goodness gracious, it's like the, the Robot Guardian thing. He's a Dreadball guy as well. Uh, Living Legends for the Asterians, Enforcers. Um, okay, the Forge Fathers, do they have him? Because, I mean, no, he isn't shown here. But, I wonder, he probably counts as a specialist. Ah, yes, the excavator robot. That's the model that's a red ball only model. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you guys the Maison Labs stuff. And here's the Maison Labs right here. Okay, specialist cyber guys. Okay. Yeah, see so cyborg beta, that's new. The cyborg, and there's a cyborg also too, and there's this tack drone. I haven't seen the model for that yet. But there's the the Crastivore. Now it's a specialist. It's, you know, it's got the close combat weapon of poison fangs and has a range two web spinner. The poison fangs AP1, that's nice. And then Toxic One as well. And then you get the stun with the web spinner, which is dirty. It is kind of heavy on the the points and uh, the VPs. Uh, a size three bad boy, but four hit points. Armor rating of one, the save of five, and the fight of four plus, which is good. The six plus of the range that kind of stinks. You think that if something, you know, you've got a web spinner built in, you were born with it think you'd be good at it uh, that's just me spending an entire life shooting webs this stat should be higher in my humble opinion but yeah I mean it is it hauls it hauls some butt uh, you know two three that's that's kind of sick man so it's fast it and you know agile beast and stealthy like yeah that's crazy it's super good, I think, and I was very, very excited to get one. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, they updated the paint job for Dead Zone. Here, let's take a peek. Yeah, they give you this kind of whack out, uh, very. I don't, I, I've never been a fan of people bleeding out the lighting effects with an airbrush. It's low skill. Uh, that's. I mean, basically, you're you're over airbrushing an area to make it look nice. That, all you do, you blob out an area with your your base color. In this this case, it's a green, dark green, and then you just give the center a little of uh, light green. And here on those vents, they just you know it's just it's terrible. It looks it, bad form, bad form. Uh, the rest of the model is okay, but the, where they did these light things, is, it's kind of a joke. A lot of people like it. A lot, a lot of people like it. It's, it's easy. It's convenient. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, you know, Striders, you can buy those all day, every day. Um, he's a little bit hard to come by. The Aberration... Uh, if you're a Plague player, you have one already. If not, uh, one comes in the Star Saga set. At least it ought to. Gail Simmons does not uh, come... Simmons does not come in the set. Uh, she was, for a while, just an online exclusive model. But now, uh, I think you can readily get her on eBay or whatnot. These guys, uh, and there is... There's a lady as well. A leader, leader lady. Um, but you can get these two guys and a leader lady. She comes. They all come in the uh, the Star Saga. Every one of these guys come in Star Saga. These cats and two different poses of the plague victims. One's running, look like um, Weapon X, Wolverine. Uh, it's got the whole helmet and whatnot. That's kind of what this guy looked like. But 
I guess maybe he's more on the on par with uh, the Resident Evil son of a gun, the Revenant or whatnot. He keeps coming back. Uh, Nemesis, that's his name. He looks kind of more like the Nemesis, except he doesn't have a big trench coat on and he's wearing the headpiece. But that's kind of what I think of him, just like the Nemesis in Resident Evil. But Maison Lab is kind of weird. It, it's, you know, basically, if you think about the Resident Evil franchise, it is the Resident Evil franchise. I mean, you've got your Umbrella Corporation guys here, and uh, you've got your oddball, you know, T virus uh, survivor kind of that's turning slowly but's kept her mental facilities. And then you've got a bunch of weird mess, you know. It's an interesting, interesting faction, I think. I'm glad that they kept them in the book. Um, but, yeah. Crest of War. And new old stock, or someone who's selling secondhand models that they had painted and whatnot. That's how you're going to find these guys. Uh, you know, best of luck to everyone hunting down these. Uh, harder to find models especially now I think now is the the time when they've they've released the book and whatnot they haven't gotten their uh, stuff together so they haven't gotten all these model kits like they're gonna have the cross divorce they're gonna put them in there with like maybe some plague victims and some uh, lab assistants and whatnot and that'll be a set that they sell. They'll be like, okay, this is the Dead Zone set for Maison Labs. And I think, honestly, Maison Labs isn't one of the uh, like coolest factions. It's a bit wonky, if, but it's cool if you like Resident Evil. But um, what it is is it's not popular, I wouldn't say. So they're going to hold off on making these guys available. In these nice sets like they've been releasing for Vermin, um, the Forge Fathers, Marauders. They just now came out with a bunch for Firefight and whatnot. So we'll see if they do Dead Zone soon. But, um, I, you know, the Vermin and GCPS. So they've made some of these sets and they're releasing very soon, this month of May. They've got a bunch of Plague stuff. I've got, you know, the Corruptor on pre-order because he's just awesome. And he probably be taking the place of my abomination um, when it comes to the sentient I would like to have a sentient I just don't need the other stuff that comes with that model uh, but me being you know kind of die hard with plague I'll probably get that model in the near future um, but this is just one of those neat little add-ons I was able to score now that there's a weird flux in releasing and stuff like that, Mantic has never been that great with releasing stuff on time, on demand, getting the product out there. I mean, my last video is all about how wonky it is to collect for Dead Zone right now. We're at a weird spot. And really, for 2.0, when they, they released uh, the Murder Birds for Warpath as a unit, and they're like, hey, let's take these cool birds and put them in 2.0. Everyone loved the, the murder birds. The murder birds are so popular. And they have excellent rules and fantastic sculpts. I love, they're probably my favorite models out of the entire line. I, they're all metal and they're gorgeous. Uh, hopefully the new sculpts come close. Hopefully. I mean, Mantic was able to do it with the old sculpts, so hopefully they still have that same thought in mind, because I would love to see that. Uh, I don't know how they're going to do it with plastic. Plastic, you can't hold the fine detail like you can with metal. Maybe they would go resin with it. I think that would be the choice. But uh, it's just like with the Murder Birds. Almost the entire longevity of 2.0, the Murder Birds were not available because the, the molds broke. And Mantic were, they were messing around, they were playing around, they were bringing out other games instead of, like, fixing stuff that people really wanted. You know, it's, it's what is it, Armada? 
like, okay, you sold some Armada stuff, you got the initial hype train going, and you sold it because everyone loved Warhammer uh, Man of War. When they brought out Dreadfleet, it was just wah, wah, wah. But then you also had guys doing Dystopian Wars. And Dystopian Wars has gorgeous models. It's really cool. They added the giant robots, which I think really helped out. But then that petered off and died. It didn't have any uh, longevity. And here comes, here comes Mantic with Armada. And it's like, come on, guys. Please, you know, take care of the fans that you already have for stuff that you're going to sell. Now, granted, people aren't going to buy bunches of uh, uh, murder birds. It just isn't going to happen. Uh, but I think it should have it should have been taken care of. That's what should have happened. And just FYI, I have finished. Uh, that's a shame. I have finished my... Mantic 3.0 terrain. Um, finally, have everything glued and um, have it all modularized and have it exactly how I wanted it. Uh, that sign there with the white, that's actually that really great um, foam putty that I, I put into the Dremel marks and whatnot. That sign had that goofy squid on it, and I wasn't going to have that. So I dremeled the mess out of that stuff. I left the writing on the side. But then um, the squid is gone on both sides. But you know, I've made some cool pieces. I'll do other videos for that. And then here, what happens to most gamers? Uh, you know, this is a 2008 version of the 360. And I'm sorry, this is how I run uh, my Skyrim and all that that good stuff. And and she gave me the, the red ring of death, so I'm trying to fix her, but I'm also going to buy um, another another one so that I can, I, I'm not, you know, too much out of the loop, because when you game, when you model and stuff, when I model, I burn out, uh, I, I burn the heck out, you know, quick, uh, especially because, like, what I'll do is I'll, I'll hit the paint, and I'll paint, I'll paint, I'll paint, I'll paint. And even now, like, I came off of painting the entire Nameless faction, and I'm still uh, doing models. I'm still cleaning models. I mean, I did all this terrain. Of course, this terrain is so easy to do. It's very, very, very fun. But I'm also, you know, picking up other models, and I'm, I'm going to clean this bad boy and stick him on a base and everything. I'm, I'm very happy with this. But... I'm also going to clean up all my mercs because I don't like seeing all those blue models in my cases. It's not sexy. But when I burn out of this, when I'm tired of this, the 360 is like a healer. You know, you, you play some games, you kill some dragons, you, you know, kick chickens or whatever you want to do. And that, that soothes the wounds and you can get back to painting in no time. So, but anyway, just wanted to explain all my stuff here and yep there's a prego thing in there but i'm gonna do a little video about what's inside yeah all right guys so this was for the crastivore i hope you guys enjoyed and uh i'll be coming at you later on with something else all right carry lays on